Hello. I'm going to do it this week. Welcome to the Endless no. Honeymoon Podcast. Let me do it this week. Okay. okay. Hello and welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Honey, that is way too loud. You don't think? I thought it was more like a boxing thing. Well, the moment you've all been waiting for is here. Let me do it like an announcer. Well, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally upon us. I have shaved my mustache and cut my hair per the repeated unceasing requests of my wife, Natasha Legero. I like the mustache. The sideways comments about the way that I looked. The constant reminder that she's no longer attracted to me. It only took that <laughs> and a request from eBay to cut my hair and shave my mustache. I'm clean shaven. I gotta say, I feel like I look... I swear to God, this is true. I was looking in the mirror and I was like... <laughs> Man, the pandemic has wrecked us all. And we really all aged. We aged what Trump was supposed to age. We aged. We have like pandemic face. All, everyone I know. Speak for yourself. Well, here's the good news. I was, well, I was looking in the mirror is what I'm saying. I was like, damn, I look fucking, wow, pandemic. Then I took a little shave and a haircut, two bits. Turns out I was wrong. I look as young, supple, and handsome as I did before the pandemic. I just had a mustache and long hair. Honey, I like your mustache. Well, it's gone, babe. The eBay Corporation requested it to be shaved, and I shaved it off, and uh, my reserve was met. I think you need a little context. We did a commercial for eBay. Yeah, yeah. My reserve, I, I, I had a reserve, no, no reserve auction on my services as a corporate a spokesperson. My reserve was met, and Natasha and I did a campaign, and they requested a clean-shaven boy. And I came through, and look at me now, looking like Tintin right now. <laughs> looking like a young Tintin on the submarine, on a naval submarine in the 1920s gay Navy. That was funny. Nick Kroll said that um, guys with ponytails think they look a little more attractive than they do. I understand what he means. I really thought I was looking sexy. And in a way... You were like truly feeling it. In a way, I was. In a way, in a kind of like, I'm off the beaten path... You know, I'm 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 eating I'm eating mochi nuggets and tempeh kind of, but now now that I cut it, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I look pretty good. This is where I belong. I, I think I belong in Smoothland. All right. How do you like it? You, you seem so underwhelmed. It's like this is a big moment for you. You've been trying to get me to cut my hair. For I a thought year. it looked really good when you cut your hair, but you still had like a little bit of five o'clock shadow and a mustache. I thought that was kind of a cool look. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I had to cut the mustache for my uh, my bosses over at eBay, but tonight I shaved my five o'clock shadow because I wanted to accentuate this new look for our our listeners they're going to be so excited watching this on youtube like who's that boy doing the podcast with natasha did natasha fire that older gentleman that she's married to and start doing a podcast with a younger boy and no the answer is it's still me i still got it if you look at my sideburns you'll see a little wisp of gray if you come up close and you and you stare deeply into my widow's peak you'll see that there's a gray or two but mostly from afar, I look 19 years old. I, I, I mean, I, right? Sure, honey. How you doing? I'm doing good. Are you more attracted to me now? Yeah. Are you? Sure. Okay. I'm glad I shamed you out of wearing the Tevas. You didn't shame me out of wearing them. I'll still wear them. I'll wear them to a river. Just because I ha don't have long hair anymore doesn't mean I can't go to a river. <laughs> I know you thought that when I cut my hair, I would stop being a river man, but I'm not. I am eternally impressed with you. We went to the beach today and you go surfing when it's like the water must be like 30 degrees. You know what the thing what is? Are you, how do you do that? Well, here's the thing. The sea is my mistress. I mean, Natasha, you're a fine girl. And what a good wife you have been. Are these the, song, the lyrics to Brandy? Yeah, they are. All right, honey. If you're tuning in now, we're citing lyrics to Brandy. <laughs> if you're a Gen Zer, we'd love to know your thoughts on the song Brandy. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. The news cycle is wearing me down a little bit, but mostly with this clean shaven face, I can forget about the problems of the world and walk forward into bliss. Do you have some sort of statement you want to make? Yeah. I have cut my hair. 
I've cut my mustache and I will be clean shaven at least for the next month. Okay. And uh, I hope that doesn't get me canceled. Okay. I know they're coming after straight white guys now for shaving their mustaches. But uh, if this, if I don't get shadow banned by this announcement, then you will know I did shave my mustache and Natasha has been, I will say, all over me. What is shadow band? Shadow band is a thing that people think happens to them on Instagram when they feel like they're they're tweeting, <laughs> posting stuff that's too dangerous for the world. Oh, to and see. then Instagram takes it off. Yeah, Instagram will will not not ban you, but they will make it so that you don't uh, show up in the algorithm. Now, I would say it's possible that shadow banning is real. It's so it's not a real ban. It's just that they like lower your amplitude, right? Uh, it's possible that shadow banning is real. I have never met a comedian who claimed to be shadow banned who I believed was in fact shadow banned. No one I've ever met who's like, I've been shadow banned by the the puppet masters over at Big Tech. Have I ever thought you're, they're saying anything close to interesting or important or dangerous enough that Instagram would have to get involved? That would be pretty cool if you just truly didn't care what anyone thought of you. I That's me. You don't care at all? No, I do. Definitely. Big time care. There's a reason I have a lot of different filters on Instagram. Not filters, visual filters, language filters. Do you know about this? Yeah, like you can't, you will never read a tweet that has like... Jew. Right. Jew's out. Sucks. Out. Not funny. Gone. Moron. No thank you. So you can do like like two words, like not funny, because if you do Mm -hmm. funny, then you won't hear that when people say you're funny. You can do a phrase. And by the way, I'd rather... I would rather never see someone say I'm funny, which I probably get, and I'm not exaggerating here, I probably get 10,000 comments a day about how funny I am. I'd rather all of those get filtered out than ever see the one, and I would say it happens to be once a year, annual tweet, somebody says you're not funny. I'd rather filter that one out and never get the compliments. The compliments are nice, but they don't, they don't do anything for me. A negative comment, I'll just be moping all day. I'll come into All day it hurts you? Yeah, I'm, I'm Don't sensitive. say that on the podcast. People oh. are going to start trolling you. Right, 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 right. I'm joking. I'm a straight up uh, concrete G and you can't get to me. I'm like uh, I'm like the fucking Berlin Wall, but when it was um, actually a powerful symbol of communism. I'm like that. You can't penetrate me. Come, There's an iron curtain and you can't, you can't affect my mood. I don't think people mean it. You think when they insult you, they don't mean it? Sometimes they don't mean it. Sometimes they don't. Have you ever had that thing where someone's like, you suck, you're not funny. And then you engage with them and they're like, dude, I'm a big fan. I was just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? How little attention do you get? <laughs> that that's What's happening? I'm a big fan. I mean, imagine if you did that to somebody in life, in, in the street. You're just like, your breath stinks and you're ugly. And they're like, what are you fucking talking about? You're like, I thought you were cute. I was trying to say hi. Anyway, Tosh, I think you're cute. I think your breath smells sweet. You know what your breath smells like? Hmm. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, you ever heard of this chocolate? You ever heard of chocolate? Yeah, it smells like chocolate. Your breath smells like roses and chocolate. Did you know that I can tell that our dog has yawned when I enter a room because it smells so bad? <laughs> of chocolate? No. I we don't... feed our dogs dark chocolate, I would say half a pound a day. And a lot of people have said that we shouldn't do that, but I actually read on an Ayurvedic website that dark chocolate in large quantities is actually very healthy for small dogs. So I've been feeding our dogs. Moshe, don't even joke about that. People get very sensitive. Okay, well, that was a joke, everybody. I'm not really I'm not really feeding. What if you just didn't care what people thought of you, though? Jokes don't really seem fun anymore. Natasha, what's going on? Are you okay? I thought this haircut would snap you out of your malaise, bring you into the light. I just feel that like even Dan Levy and I were doing the show, we we're making fun of houses and then we went to do a talk show and they were like, don't say anything mean about the houses. You yeah, because you don't want to get canceled by like, house culture. No, they're like, don't say anything mean about the houses. Try to make it more wacky because <laughs> we don't want to be mean to the houses. So like if we can't even make fun of houses, I don't really know where I'm at. Well, it's good for me. This is good for me. Because I've always been known in comedy as comedy's wacky superstar. And so this is actually, in a weird way, my moment to shine. I kind of hate wacky. 
Do you? You hate wacky? I like I like like loose and silly, but wacky? Mm-hmm. No, that's not me. That's, and you don't like puns either. No, 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 no. Don't like no, a pun. No, don't no. like a wacky. Don't no. like a fart joke. No, no, no. No scatological. Nothing? Not even a little? I mean, of course, it's. I've grown to adore it, I suppose. Because you married me, you mean? I mean, how can I bring you that resist? Scat to, I bring that scat to your doorstep. And it's fun to make fun of it with the kid thinks it's funny. I mean, everyone thinks it's funny. Yeah. So you've changed. You've grown into a, into a non-wacky, scatological uh, comedian. Comedian. I just want to come back in like a few years. To, to what? I don't know. From what? I don't know. You just want to hide for a few years? No, like um, do my podcast. You want to come back to the podcast in a few years? I don't know, Moshe. I'm just saying it doesn't sound that fun to go make jokes on stage. Who brought up stand-up? I was talking about my haircut. Oh, okay. Because I feel like a lot of stand-ups I know, they just keep getting in fights with other stand-ups when they go do their shows. What? Or like people are just kind of aggro and mean. Oh, in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I've noticed that people are aggro and mean in the world. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I have noticed that. I just want to like bow out for a little bit. See, the thing is for me... But that's cowardly. I agree that you are a huge coward. The thing is for me that I just am like, keep your head down and do your own thing. It's not about other people. I'm not worried about other people. What the fuck do I care about these fucking idiots in the world that are like desperately vying for like, say the most outrageous offensive possible thing they can to try to get a little bit of attention that's not what i'm i'm not i'm not trying to make those people like me i'm trying to make people that like funny stuff i'm trying to find the wacky people of comedy and have them come to my shows you know what maybe i do like wacky well let's go on the road and be wacky together (laughs) okay well why don't we take a call let's take a call and let's see if it's a little wacky okay okay calling ryan in west virginia ryan how are you hi ryan hi guys how are you tonight oh we're fine how's it going in west virginia it's here yeah mountain mama things like that other other references That's correct. yeah all right ryan what's going on we're in a little bit of a wacky mood we should probably <laughs> warn you <laughs> okay that's all right so i am 29 years old and i live here in west virginia i've actually always lived in west virginia and i bought my first house about two and a half years ago now how much does a house in west virginia cost is it two hundred and eighty thousand? is it under a hundred dollars way under natasha way under what are we talking about here 79 so when we bought our house ours is a basic three bed two bath house and and we paid around 170 for it, but the housing market is really up right now, um, as has happened lots of places because of COVID. And we would probably get like 250 out of our house right now. Look at you. Wow. You know how much a three bedroom place in Los Angeles that is condemned and literally has typhoid in it would cost? Out of my price range? <laughs> $1.7 million is what I would guess. So, wow. West Virginia seems like a good move for you, Ryan. Also, what? West Virginia is gorgeous. I've never been. It's one of the states I've never been to. Oh, I've never been either. I just assumed it's because of John Denver. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty. So, what's happening, Ryan? How can we help? So, we bought our house. Um, and when I say we, I mean my brother and I. Because I am a millennial and I do have college debt, so I couldn't buy it all by myself. Even though the housing market is cheaper here. So, my brother brother and I are roommates, which typically works great. Um, We get along very well. We're pretty close. Um, He has one floor of the house. I have another floor of the house. I like Um, it. Most of the time, like our schedule is during the week, we don't have a ton to do with each other. But then on weekends, we hang out, stuff like that. So my problem is he recently has gotten a new girlfriend who has really been involved for the last month and a half. And we're talking like, She's here almost every weekend. It typically is about four-day weekends because she can work from anywhere. Meanwhile, my brother and I still go off to our workplaces during the time. Um, She's even going on like our post-COVID trips that we have planned. And I really like her so far. Um, I'm not unhappy that my brother's in a relationship. I'm really happy that he's found someone that he likes. My question for you guys is, how do I appear supportive and not overly jealous and concerned 
but while also letting my boundaries be known because, you know, I don't love spending Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights listening to them be in a relationship in the bedroom above me while I'm down here acting like a stranger in my own house. Mm. I mean, firstly, I have to say, to quote the friar in Romeo and Juliet, a pack of blessings lay light upon your back. Like, it does feel that you're very lucky in the sense that you were able to live with your brother and you guys are friends and you were able to buy a house together and you have separate floors and you like this girl. It just feels like a very congenial, is that the right word? Like, like you know, setting and... It feels like also, I mean, it's just your weekend that's kind of being wrecked a little bit, right? Right. And I guess from my standpoint, like I work in healthcare. Um, I used to work education, but I work healthcare now, which has been absolutely crazy because of the COVID pandemic. We're just now starting to get into a sense of normalcy. So my weekends are really like my recharge time where I feel like a normal human being. But suddenly, like, I'm feeling like that's a time when I still have to be like on and friendly. Mm -hmm. And Do you have your own personal, (laughs) but can you just like, you know, Friday, do you guys share a kitchen? We do. I see. So you can't just like... It's not like you have your own like total apartment where you can just do your own thing. No, I'm I'm in the master bedroom, which is on the first floor. And then he's in one of the spare bedrooms upstairs. He has his own bathroom. Technically, he has his own living room. I'm in it right now because they're both on the same floor. Um, but then we share like the dining room and kitchen. Got it. So you guys share a lot. We do. Have <laughs> you thought about sharing a lover? Like perhaps if you, no. you could get in, you could kind of <laughs> jump in on that. That's not overly possible because actually he is dating a woman and I prefer to be with a man. <laughs> well, I'll, well, we all have to make sacrifices in these, in these pandemic times. I mean, we can't be <laughs> slaves to what we want. You know, maybe this is the solution. No, here's my real question. That was a joke. Uh, but my real question is, does this woman, is this woman uh, homeless? She is not. So she has a actually home. they met online and they are dating long distance right now. Where does she um, live? We're in we're in the part of West Virginia. Um, it's we call it the Eastern Panhandle. It's near DC. We can be in DC in about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, she is from Pittsburgh. Um, he has gone there to spend a couple weekends, but I don't know. She she spent much more weekends here. Um, and I think I think there's good reason for that. I don't know if she's overly happy there. And I think she prefers to be here at this point in time, which is fine. And I'm not saying that like being around her is excruciating. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, We all had dinner together tonight. They went on a hike this weekend. So it was nice because I had the house to myself Mm -hmm. for a little bit of time um, while they did an overnight backpacking trip. And then when they came home, I cooked, we had dinner together and then they went upstairs. They're asleep now and I'm downstairs talking about it. All right. I th- ba- oh. Well, boundaries are reasonable, right, in this kind of situation. But I'm not exactly sure what they should be. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what's. You. It's just that you feel a little encroached upon, right? Right, and I think I think my brother and I agree on that. I've had a little bit of a conversation already about it, and I think he's like, I know it's happened really quickly, and she's here a lot. Um, I know they talked about it this weekend a little bit. But I just want like my bigger question, like my biggest question is how do I appear supportive and everything like that? Because I want him to nurture this relationship and have a great life. Um, but also, I, or I guess my anxiety, too, is because I feel like the answer to this question probably is, well, if it gets serious, one of us could move out or we both could move out and they could do their own thing. Um, my anxiety behind that is because of what the housing market's like right now, like I can't afford to live by myself. So I feel like if that's the answer, then I'm feeling anxious about where do I go to live because Uh, I'm not going back to my parents' house. I I, I, I have an idea here. Do you, I have have one, one question. Do you have any idea of like what he could do that's not just let her stay there because she, you know, she's in town, you know, like, like what's the alternative? I mean, I guess one alternative was her not spending as much time here, but I don't, I would never ask him not to stay in our own home. Like it's half his house too. So I would never be like, please go get a hotel this weekend or plan a trip this weekend. And what about, what if you had a boy, do you have a boyfriend? I don't. 
if you had a boyfriend, don't you think you would want the ability to bring him home whenever you wanted and to be... But maybe not four nights a week. Well, don't you feel like you would, since it, you own the home, that you would want that opportunity? Yes, but I think that's another like layer of complexity that we're getting into. I don't know that I would feel comfortable about that. Not that my brother doesn't know about my sexuality or wouldn't be supportive of it. Um, just the way that gay dating works, especially here in West Virginia, I think it's still a little bit stigmatized and I'm uncomfortable with it. Wait, like man, your, hold on your a brother lets, lets you hear him pounding her where it's like you probably... <laughs> It has more. happened before. Hold on a sec, though. Go back a bit. I'm calling bullshit. You're telling me that homosexuality is somewhat stigmatized in West Virginia? That doesn't make any sense. Be. I'm joking. Are you kidding? No, I'm joking. Why, why Once why again, wouldn't? I am joking. I guess I'm just bombing tonight. But Ryan, I have a thought. I really do have a thought. Okay. I, a lot of this feels to me, hearing you, like it's actually, mu- to quote, my favorite playwright, Sh- William Shakespeare? F. Shakespeare. Okay. Much ado about nothing, <laughs> because you're. It's the ang- the anxiety of what might happen. Sounds like it's actually the predominant mm. thing here, because everything you're telling me, I was about to say. Well, you he's your brother, and you're incredibly well spoken about this particular thing. You don't seem like you're really your language is very confused. Well, you and you have an ultimate partner in dialogue because he can't ever say fuck you I'm never talking to you again he's your brother you could just tell him this stuff and then you're like but I already did tell him this stuff and then I'm listening to the stuff that you that you probably told him I'm like well you're so reasonable you you want to support his love but you also don't want to be encroached upon you want some boundaries okay, but- and then he hold on hold on let me get to it and then and then he said I respect your boundaries and we're going to start maybe you know adjusting a bit what I really think is going on here is that you're worried about stuff that isn't as present yet. You're worried about what if it gets worse? What if she comes all the time? What if I get uncomfortable? Also, I'm, what if I push my boundaries so hard that I force my brother to lose his love? What if he doesn't, if it doesn't go that way and he does get more in love with her, then he moves out? Then I can't afford my own housing. What about the housing market in West Virginia? I mean, the, the whole thing to me feels like it's in the vibrating realm of like fear and and like right now what's real right and i hear i definitely hear that and i understand that i have my own unpacking to do with the situation but at the same time like i also want to be supportive and i will stop that by saying i'm the communicative sibling i have a, I'm, I'm actually a speech therapist so i have two degrees in how to communicate effectively with other people um when that's not necessarily like where he comes to it from. And I, I don't want to, because I feel like, again, we are very close. So I feel like if I'm too hard, that he would just push away, that he would be like, not from me, but he would almost be like, well, is this really what I want right now? And he would push her away. But that's what I'm saying. I'm hearing that from you. You're both worried about it going too well for them and then you losing your roommate and also worried about it not going well for them because you made some strong boundaries and then you've made your brother be alone and not have love in his life. All I'm saying is it sounds like to me your boundaries aren't unreasonable and you've been really cool about it and you have a good relationship with your brother and you are being awesome as a brother. Uh, I don't know what the word for a brother-in-law to be is or whatever you're you're going out to dinner with them you're hanging out it sounds to me like you're already in a good place the worry is the problem the fear is the problem and you can just like find out what happens so can i ask you guys then what 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 do you think reasonable boundaries would be because i we not, haven't necessarily talked about what those boundaries look like i've just made the comment like when we've talked like i think that there needs to be boundaries but what do you think I can reasonably ask for in that situation. I think you have to think like what, what is annoying to you? What is the thing that is she like drinking your orange juice? Right. You know, what is happening? I still, we still haven't heard that. What has happened that has crossed a boundary? So, and and I know it kind of crossed uh, the example I'll give is again, she can work from anywhere. Um, So she, when she is working on like a Friday or a Monday, It's from here in our home where, again, we both go to work, but my brother is always at work first. 
So my mm. mornings are my time when, you know, I need to get up and get in that mindset to go give some great speech therapy um, in a healthcare setting. And I just feel like, I, like in the morning specifically, that's where I'm like, well, I know she's upstairs. She might be sleeping. She might be working. Like, and, and that's what I'm feeling like the most anxiety when it's just, I guess, like her and I in the house. And okay, like, great. That looks like. Lo- love that. Well, can I ask you this? What's the shared space that you're worried about running into each other in? Is it the, the, the kitchen so the kitchen potentially but the way our house is laid out a little bit like our live my living room i'm in my brother's living room right now but my living room is open to the whole rest of the house Mm -hmm. like uh it's a two-story living room and his bedroom door is at the top of that two stories so even if i'm in my living room like i could see her hanging out the second floor of our house doing whatever so w- would it help you at all if you guys switched places and you took the top floor and he took the bottom? No, sir. I, I have the bigger <laughs> wardrobe. I will be keeping that master bedroom. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I mean, it's such a hard situation because part of me would want to be like, listen, for, you know, m- mornings that aren't weekends, I, I you know, I really kind of like do my own thing in the house and I have my own vibe and I really look forward to that. But then if she, and maybe she could like work at a Starbucks or whatever until you're gone. But then the problem is then she hears that and then she might take offense and it's, it's really hard. I don't know. Okay. I have another question. But I do hear you. I, I would not want her kind of you know lazing about no i hear that too that I would, would be really piss me uncomfortable off uncomfortable some random per- i mean by the way you're the one that decided to to buy a house with a roommate i mean and this is part of sure. the consequences of having roommates is that whether they're your brother or not they have people around is she coming in right now is that what's happening no it's actually my dog she's like why are you not in bed right now <laughs> <laughs> um okay i have a weird question is there any world in which hanging something would create a, just a bit of visual privacy for you. Changing the layout of your house slightly would allow you a little bit more privacy in the morning so that you could walk out into your living room and you couldn't see whether or not she was up there. That could work. To me, that would be... I mean, look, the obvious answer is, hey, your girlfriend's spending too much time here. I want the house to myself in, in the morning. But you're worried about then telling your brother, who's also an owner of the house you know spend less time with this person i have an idea what is it what if there's just a rule at the house a house rule she can be there as much as she wants just not without him is that unreasonable i don't think it's that unreasonable no i mean it's like couldn't you like have that kind of rule i mean that is a little creepy that she's just there yeah, and I would agree to that rule, except I sort of advocated against that rule on her behalf like three days ago because they went hiking this weekend and she was like, well, I think the obvious answer is she should go home after the hike, but that's like a three hour drive after they backpacked. And I was like, hey, if you want this to work, I feel like you're being a dick. Like I'm going to take you hiking through the woods and then I expect you to get in your car and drive home. No, like, no, no. It's not your business. Let her stay and rest. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Natasha. You're you're trying to play both both sides of the coin here. You're trying to both be have boundaries, but also be codependent about their relationship. And you gotta you have to kind of choose, okay. I think, right? Yeah, and, and I okay. think I think it might be healthy and good to maybe have this conversation with your brother and say and and just really lead with how much you like her, how much you're happy for him, but you know, what do you think about maybe like you you know, when she's here, it's you know, you're there, you're with her because, you know, I don't have, I don't ever have the house to myself. And, you know, when you go to work, those are, that's like my respite to like get ready for work and be stressed. And I like to walk around naked. I mean, you can make stuff up, you know, I, I white lies, right. You know, and, and or start walking around naked. She'll probably leave real quick, honestly. And, and just, just ask him, say, would you have an issue with that? Maybe is that something that we could maybe do because i mean imagine if the tables were turned right and you had some dude just like hanging out when your brother without his girlfriend is just sitting at home trying to eat his grape nuts you know it's like (laughs) bummer i think natasha might be right it's time maybe it is time to say a little how long have they been together 
like a month and a half. So oh. this is going like very quickly. Yeah, yeah. You got to do it now. Yeah. You got to do it now or you're fucked. You're really fucked. And 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 just, just keep saying how much you like her and you're like really happy that he met her. And this isn't about her. It's about you. Yeah. And it's about what you right. need, you know, and like you're, you know, and just blame COVID. Just like I'm decompressing. I'm getting back into the world. I'm trying to find myself again. I, I relish, you know, I love living with you, brother, but I relish this time that I get to like, because even Moshe left today with our kid to go visit his mom because I have a boundary where his mom moved down the street and I said, I can see your mom once a week. You can go see her as much as you want, but once a week is good for me. And so he took, cause I had already seen her this week. So I was like, okay, you go. He took her away. The point is I was alone in the house for like an hour and a half. I just sat in the dark and had a blast. <laughs> like, I don't even know what happened. I just like found myself again. Like, just like, being alone, there's something about being alone f for certain personality types. Maybe not everybody's like this, but it really no, is that's like, definitely me. <laughs> yeah, it's just, re it's like recharging and like, you know, it's, it's, it's you and you care so much about, you know, you're like this host and you're worrying about her shower and her hike and whatever. It's like, that's exhausting being that kind of person. And so for people like us, you know, I'm assuming you're kind of like me in that way. It's like you kind of need to like have like a decompression, no one there, no one to I, answer to or listen to or, you know, I, I just think it's important. You, Nata I'm with her. Just unlike in the, the election, I'm with her. No, just kidding. <laughs> I voted for Hillary. I think the language she's giving you is the perfect language. You tell your okay. brother nothing about his girlfriend, all about you. I've been doing some thinking and what I've realized about myself is I really need some alone time in the mornings right. to decompress. I need that for me. I love your girlfriend, but it's just important for me to be able to be alone when I wake up. Make it not about her at all. She's welcome here anytime that you're here, but I need this stuff. And then I don't think that's going to hurt his feelings or make him push her away. He's just going to have to say, hey, go to a Starbucks or I'm, I'm sorry, it's West Virginia. Go to a Cracker Barrel and <laughs> like just do your work there. I think that's so good. Yeah. yeah. Starbucks. I know. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm delving into stereotype, but I'm trying to have some fun with it. You know, she sounds hot. I'm sure it's hard for him. You know, it's a new relationship. But like, I would never stay like squat in some guy's apartment. That's the other thing. I would feel uncomfortable me staying in someone's house that I was dating. But she lives like four hours away, so but I get still, it. But still, listen, it's not totally unreasonable to, it's not totally unreasonable to say, I need this space to myself. I wouldn't do it. Would you hang out in someone's house if you were dating some guy and then their brother was there that was actually the homeowner? I would, I would leave without being asked. Right, I just don't want her to feel like that in my house. But, but I think Natasha is right where it needs to be more about me and setting my boundaries. And I need the alone time in the mornings to where like the rest of my week can go as I normally plan. Amen. And and top it off, uh, when, you, when you have this conversation, have like some kind of thing like and be like, oh, and do you guys want to do like movie night this Saturday? Right. Like also have like another thing that you want to do with them. Oh, that's good. No? Ask them out. <laughs> he doesn't on a like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, go to. No, it's, it's not. It's it's that those are already planned because she's got like literally anything that my brother and I are doing this summer together. She is now coming along, too. OK, so I, I will not be planning any extras. No, there you go. Your okay. duty, your duty in terms of being a good brother is done. Now it's time to do the duty that you owe yourself. And that means OK, do some classic stuff like you do on the weekends of West Virginia. Pluck a banjo, you know, a whittle a corn cob pipe. <laughs> do what you do. Enjoy yourself. Okay. Thank you guys so much. All You're right. Welcome. Good luck. Love the podcast. Hopefully okay. it was helpful. Thank Bye. you. You Bye guys Bye. have a great night. Bye. Same to you. Bye. 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 It was sweet. I think it's so funny. Roommates I, are so hard. I have noticed that a big demographic of the gay men that call us, mm -hmm. like a big demographic, are in places that are, you would think, oh, that's an interesting place to be gay and date. I wonder what, if there's any, if that's, I wonder what that is. Like, I feel like we don't have a, like, we haven't had a lot of gay men calling from Manhattan and San Francisco and Los Angeles. It's usually like, hi, I'm a gay man living in r deepest rural Appalachia. <laughs> well, here's my question. Have you noticed this? 
I haven't, honey. Well, let's keep a lookout for it. Sounds good. And I hope we helped him. Um, you, I think you got to the kernel of it. I really need to have time alone. Me too. That's why I surf. Yeah, but that's not really true, Moshe. Okay. You surf with friends and you, you'll you go to like, you, you had like nine shows this week. But what does that have to do with me needing time alone? Needing time alone doesn't mean you don't need time with other people. I feel like I you recharge both. like at a party. Uh-huh. I love parties. I've been partying this whole pandemic. <laughs> I, I, I like alone time. You don't believe me? I love it. I love being alone. I was alone for 32 years until we started dating. Loved it. You watched Star Trek Voyager 40 times in a row. Voyager's not my favorite of the shows. What's the one you watch every night? Deep Space Nine is what I'm watching right now. I always know like after we get into a fight, I always feel bad because then I hear you turn on Deep Space Nine. I'm like seething to Benjamin Sisko. <laughs> you're just Captain like... Captain Sisko. <sighs> well, it's like you're like that your thing to help you decompress. Yeah. It's like a it's like a sleepy time tea. Cute. Uh, Tosh, do you want to hear a couple secrets? Oh, I would love to. I miss those. That's another way I decompress Hearing by listening secrets. to secrets. Okay, let's hear some. Hello. I secret um when my partner and i are having sex usually he is on top of me facing me and my cat is usually sitting on the end of the bed just staring at us and my partner can't see because he's looking at me and you know i just I really, I just don't care. I just let my cat sit there and look at us. Doesn't make me uncomfortable. I just don't mind. And sometimes she'll walk over to us and I'll pet her. I don't know. It feels very weird to say, but that's my secret. All right. Thanks, guys. I mean, we have six chihuahua eyes staring at us every time we have sex. I was with her until she said she pets the the cat during (laughs) sex. It didn't even feel like a secret till till the petting. I mean, what a what a turn to be getting pounded. I definitely don't pet the dogs while we fuck. No, but they're around. There's a lot of moving, yelping, get away, go away. Oh fuck yeah! Oh fuck yeah! Our dog says that. <laughs> Pablo sometimes will say that if I'm giving it to you really good, I'll hear him in perfect English say, "Oh fuck yeah." I was thinking that you and I, Moshe, we're lucky we found each other because we both let dogs in the bed. Mm. Like, I feel like we have three dogs sleeping in between I thought something very romantic was coming down the pike just then. Well, I was just thinking it'd be really hard to be with someone who, like, doesn't think you should sleep with three dogs in between you. Well, I'll give you some news, honey. Pretty soon, we're not going to be sleeping with three dogs in between us. Why? Because these dogs are geriatric. (laughs) I would say cutie... I can hear her breathing most nights. It sounds like a wet balloon. <laughs> it sucks. She's she, like... <gasps> <gasps> Cutie is on her last fucking <laughs> legs, dude. I feel terrible. And the fucking vet won't even call us back. These people don't care. Anyway, Natasha, Yeah. I think we're lucky we found each other because you're the perfect gal for me. But also the dog sleeping in between us is a big... <laughs> It's a big boon. Should we hear another secret? Yeah, let's hear another one. Yeah, hi, guys. Yeah. I live on Long Island in the Hamptons. I know. And <laughs> my friends come from New York City expecting super fresh, all natural, organic goods, which I try to provide. I make a uh, a great salad, and I don't always use a homemade salad dressing. And I don't tell them it's Paul Newman's. And that's my secret for today. I love you guys. Bye. Now that- so she's like, come over to come over to the Hamptons. I'll, I'll go to the farmer's market. I'll whip you up a beautiful, fresh salad. That is a Hampton secret if ever I've heard one. I'm deeply ashamed of what I'm about to say. But once in a while, the poppy seed dressing is actually Newman's own. Is Newman's own even good? Uh, it's fine. Okay. Um, lady, you know, we love you too. And those rich people don't deserve homemade hand whipped organic salad dressing. Let them taste, let them taste how the other half dresses their salad. 
Or Moshe, you could give our listeners a recipe to one of your amazing salad dressings because you are so good at whipping up a dressing. All right, here's what I do. I'll take some olive oil and a little bit of balsamic and then I add soy sauce. I whip it into a caramelized whipperino. I'll add a little bit of um, sometimes some uh, nutritional yeast. Whip it on up. Herb or two? Sure, why not? A salt product? Yes, please. And then maybe a little pinch of dry mustard. Whip it on up and see what's happening. And then how do you know when to stop adding stuff? Because I'm really bad at like salting and peppering. It's like always too salty. Mm. How do you know? You taste it, honey. That's how you know. And why dry mustard? Because it gives it a little bit of a pinch. (laughs) Just a little bite. That's pretty cool. I'm You're glad you know cool. how to cook. Well, I know how to whip up a salad. You are dressing. very good at dressing. You think so, huh? Yeah. I basically, the truth is, well, the way I make a salad dressing and a sauce, I just kind of look at the spice rack and I just start adding stuff that sounds like it'll go good together. Honey, most people don't know how to do that. Well, what can you do? All right. You know who did know how to do it? Who? The famed movie star, Paul Newman, <laughs> star of Cool Hand Luke. Oh, maybe you could do a Moshe Kasher... Uh, dressing line. Casher zone. Mm, mm. I love it. All right, I'll do it. I'm going to launch a salad dressing line. <laughs> There's been some uh, opening in the food market with Chrissy Teigen's cancellation. So I'm stepping in. Chrissy, when you come back, this space will be waiting for you. But in the meantime, Casher zone. Okay, let's hear one more. <laughs> Hey, Motion Cash. I'm a early what? 30s guy, and I have a secret for you. So I have a buddy who's married, and during COVID, his wife told him that she really wanted to try giving a blowjob through a glory hole. And so instead of going on apps or whatever, he asked me if I would help. Never done anything with him before. And so, yeah, for the past couple months, I've been meeting up with them and one of my good friend's wives, who I'm also socially cordial with, has been giving me a blowjob and I've been fucking her. It's all good, but she doesn't know. And it's kind of fun when we hang out. I got some news for you, buddy. (laughs) Your friend who called you and said, I want you to participate in the glory hole blowjob that my wife requested is not telling the truth it's him his wife's not involved it's his fantasy wait your what? best friend has been sucking your dick my friend wait did this guy's wife say it was okay or this guy doesn't have a wife no oh he doesn't have a wife he's the- early 30s guy oh he's just single he's some dude his friend's wife was like i want to suck a dick through a glory hole and his friend was like what's up brother well why didn't his wife want to suck her husband's dick through a glory hole what's the fun in that Suck the dick you always suck, I but mean, now there's plywood involved? To be honest, glory holes don't sound very fun to me at all. But I, I, Well, not to me either, but I get, the, I get the appeal of them. I get the illicitness of like the anonymous dick popping through a hole, and then you slurp on it, and then, you know, it's like, a, you know, I'm a dirty, dirty girl kind of thing. Maybe I don't like dicks enough. I just, well, that's good to hear, honey. Glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> to slurp one through a hole? All I'm saying is, well, she wanted to feel like a naughty girl, and you know what? Uh, and th- there's no better way to feel like a naughty girl than to see a penis pop through a knot in that piece of plywood. But I do think, honestly, that your friend is probably sucking your dick, too. I do wonder if you could tell the difference between a female mouth and a male mouth. Uh, as long as they're shaving, I would say no. Mm. Right? Yeah. It is kind of cool. Oh, maybe though. grunting, though. Groaning a little bit. Mm. Oh, brother. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> it's me, the wife. I mean, I'm jealous of these people who are so, like, open sexually. Mm, Me too. (laughs) Me too, honey. Well, just to be married and tell your husband, like, I'm ready to have one of your friend's dicks go into a glory hole. (laughs) Do you have a a fantasy that you haven't admitted to me? Um, That you're also willing to share on a podcast that goes out through 750,000 subscribers? Yeah, probably not. No. Okay. But I, I, I appreciate the spirit mm-hmm. of of that. Do you have something? Uh, yeah. yeah. What is it? I, I, I'm not willing to share it. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what it is. What? My fantasy is, and it has been ever since we started the podcast, to have the wife of a friend of one of our listeners give me a blowjob through a glory hole. Honey, you can do that. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? You can go go through a glory hole and get sucked off. And you wouldn't care? No. I would come home and be like, honey, great day today. Well, I mean. I got sucked off through a glory hole. It and you'd seems be like, like. How's that salad dressing coming along? It seems like the least intimate th- sexual act you could possibly perform. So really I have permission to do that? Well, it feels like it'd be almost impossible Hold to on. create any bond. I'm Googling. Hold on. <laughs> How would you create any bond or any sort of like crush on someone when they just... That's what you're worried about is me catching a, catching feelings? Well, I don't know. I mean, isn't that like the... Isn't that what happens when people open up the relationship? Oh, I don't know. I can tell you one thing, honey. Hmm. It wouldn't happen to me. You know why? Why? You're the only girl for my heart. But there are many girls for, uh, for, your me dick? To, for me to stick my penis through a piece of plywood. That's very sweet. Or drywall. Yeah. You know, I was thinking recently that we were, uh, it's re- we're really lucky we found each other because other than the literally hundreds or thousands of women that I would like to um, have oral sex through a, a glory hole with, you're the only gal that I could ever have a crush on. I was just thinking that. that Thank you. On the, I just was thinking that. Thank you so much. Um, I think we better wrap this podcast up because I need to find out if there are any glory holes in the local Los Angeles area. Hold on, we're not doing one more call? Oh, let's do one more call. Yeah. Um, I'm a little distracted, but yeah. We have someone waiting. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, Let's call her or him. I don't know who it is. It's like a glory hole right now. Okay, now we're going to call Cassidy in Berlin. That's in Germany. I made a Berlin, I made a Germany reference during the podcast tonight. What are the odds? You did? Yes. What did you, you say? Listen to me. <laughs> what did you say? Do you listen to my riffs? They're gold. Um, hello. Hi, Ca- Cassidy. Cassidy. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Wait a second. I'm trying to suss out if you are an American college student living in She's Berlin. She's an expat. Or if you're a German woman calling. She's Canadian. Hold on. Say a few more things. Say like a few more things. Say, say like, <laughs> do you have your papers or something like that? Do you have your papers? Can I see your passport? Mm, American. Yes. Okay, damn it. <laughs> Thank All you right. so much for calling me a college student. I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> sure. How are you doing? Why are you in Berlin? <laughs> uh, I live and work here. It's a, it's a so. great city. World-class city. I've never been. It's, it is a world-class city. It's fucking yeah. awesome. You know, I went to Berlin and I'm a Jew. I don't know if you know this. But I went to Berlin <laughs> and I and if you can imagine, I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder about the Germans. And when I got there, I just found them all so friendly and hot and fuckable that I just was like, it just wore down all of my Jewish PTSD. And I was just like, oh, these people can't be denied. I get why they thought they were better than everybody else. They kind of are. They kind of are. They are very hot. It's yeah, a very hot city. It's a hot city. It really is. Yeah. All right. What's up? <laughs> Um, Okay, so I'm an American, but I've been abroad for nearly seven years. The first part being abroad, I was in a really small city in Germany called Lüneburg. Can I just stop you here? Can I stop you here? I just don't know if you know this about yourself, but you you've done that thing where people live in a country too long. You've got like a little bit of a stank on the end of your (laughs) consonants. It's a little bit of a German, a little bit of a German stank going on. I'm so embarrassed by it, but I don't know how to change it. I so like this it. is part of my problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I've been abroad for so long now that like I lived in this small town where I only spoke German for a while. And then since living in Berlin, I'm speaking a lot more English now, but I don't know how to flirt anymore. Mm. So my whole life here has been just sort of like trying to understand and be understood that all nuance is gone. Mm. How do you, how does one flirt with a person that doesn't share your native tongue? Well, it just depends. So like I can speak German so I can like, you know, communicate in this language. But then a lot of people in Berlin are international. So you're usually speaking with non-native English, like non-native English speakers, but in English. Mm -hmm. My advice for flirting is to always try to keep it light and fun and maybe do less. Just silence. Not (laughs) silence, but like, you know, you can take things in, you know? And I think like, 
Especially if you like someone, you I mean, I think men, do you like men or women? Men. Okay, that's my specialty. Um, <laughs> well, I feel like men need to kind of know that you're attracted to them. So that's something that is important, you know, to like let them know that you think that they're cute, I guess, right? Like don't, yeah. I mean, so they don't think you're like being friends or something. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I just don't really believe in like having to put in too much work. Girl like, do less. Feeling like you have to like let him know and make sure that you're like, do, you know what I mean? It's like you kind of have to like surrender a little bit. Yeah, I get that. I think coming out of a pandemic. So I yeah. live in Berlin alone and it's been on lockdown for the last I don't know, nearly a year and a half. And I'm wondering about like this next step. Like how do people even engage with like this first step of showing interest? Have you thought about constantly bringing up the second world war? <laughs> I think that would they'd get a lot of mileage out of that. It's charming. It's a universally loved topic, I would imagine. I mean, okay, here's the, the world war context. Yeah. <laughs> here's the good news. There is going to be a lot of like, cool men experienced men getting divorced and so that is so true <laughs> there'll be like <laughs> this dating pool of like men who like n have been in relationships they're mature they might have kids they've had a wife they've mm -hmm. you know they kind of knew how to like do all of that so they're not like complete idiots so that, that's good news that is true there's going to be a glut in the market very soon people coming out <laughs> Um, well, let me ask you this. What are you looking for? Do you want um, love or do you want just a fling? Um, I think I want a partner, but like... It, you, just like hard, you just went hardcore like the hills are alive with the sound of music, <laughs> Hilda, just so you know. It comes in and out. Most of the time you sound American, but just then I, got, I actually got scared and I thought I needed to run. I'm already in my I'm basement, so <laughs> but I felt like I needed to go to a, a deeper sub-basement. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I would do uh, it. By the way, I think I would do it too. I think I'm the type of I'll spend a week in New York and I'll and I'll start saying like things are mad cool. Like I do think I would She's been in Germany for almost a decade. I know, I'm saying speaking German. I'm saying. And what is the excuse that Arnold Schwarzenegger has to sound like he literally just stepped out of a, <laughs> a, a of of an Alp? He's he just, not American. I know. I'm saying he's been here for like 40 years and he still sounds like he just skied off of the Alps. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> You're forgiven for your accent. I mean, if you want, what, what were you saying? You want a fling or you want a man? Um, man. I, I think I want like more of a partner. So like more of a boyfriend, more of something serious. Got it. Got it. Because I was going to say like the good news when you're a woman and you're with men <laughs> is that, uh, is that the, the odds of a man hanging out with you twice being interested in you is at approximately 100%. Like <laughs> the, w women are always like, I don't know if he's interested. I'm like, if he's there, he's interested. He's like, he is interested. But what if they're just at a bar? I'm just saying, if he's talking to you, he's interested. Is that true? I, it's it's a it's a it's true enough that it you might as well assume that it's true. Yes, I don't mean to say that every re interaction between men and women is sexualized, and every man is interested in solely in hooking up with every woman. All I'm saying is. If the guy's there and he's talking to you, the the flirtation onus is so low, so much lower on a woman than it is on a man because men are creepy. I mean, women can be creepy too. I've met, I've met many creepy women. One bought me a, an M&M vase after a date once. She bought me a, a bouquet of flowers and put them in a vase of M&Ms, which actually sounds like something German people would do because they are kind of corny in a, in a way too. But all I'm saying is if you're at a bar and a guy's talking to you, it's not like you have to be like coming up with pickup lines. Like if he's there and he's chatting with you, he's flirting with you too. Okay. But what about the situation of like people aren't not like native English speakers. So the chatting is usually a little bit more formal than you would find in the U S because they only have like a vocabulary like this instead of to talk about everything. How is your vocabulary in German? Well, my vocabulary in German is fine. So like my last relationship was with a German and we only spoke German. So like I can get around, um, but I don't know if I want to date a German again. <laughs> Why? What's up? What Sounds is that exhausting. like? Sounds exhausting. Well, they're uncircumcised, first of all. <laughs> yeah, that? but that's most European men. So <laughs> <laughs> Is that, do you not like that, Natasha? Not really. Oh, that's why you chose me. 
Yes. Um, what? Why don't you want to date a German man? Um, they're very orderly. So no. like, they're not. Are you serious? They're not. Yeah. <laughs> German men. German men orderly. We just had a caller earlier that said that in he's from West Virginia. He said that homosexuality is stigmatized in West Virginia. And now you're telling me that Germans are orderly. It's like <laughs> none of this is making sense. <laughs> like they're orderly to a point where everything has a process. So like in my last relationship, we got into an argument because I was snacking while making dinner, which like wasn't allowed. <laughs> by, by the way, what? I kind of, he sounds like an asshole. But, but Moshe kind of gets mad at me. Too he sounds like an asshole, but I relate. I relate to what he's going through. I hate it when people eat before they eat. I really do. What do you care if they're still hungry? I don't know. I hate it though. Yeah. It's not, and it's not just you. It's my brother, <laughs> my all my friends. If you're eating before you eat, I'm like, we're about to eat. Why are you eating? I get what he's. I, maybe I'm German. I can introduce you if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, first of all, what I recommend to everybody who's looking for a partner is to like really make a list. It can be a very private list of like what you want in a partner. And I think it's really helpful because I think it really just to just it's like you're writing it to yourself. What are your what are your deal? What are your what are the things that that are non-negotiable that you have to have? And what are the things that would be nice if you had but aren't like that important? And I also think if if I were single in Berlin, I would be going to like every cool cultural event and like just trying to like get out on the town, make this, uh, what are they saying? Um, what are they saying that COVID's going to be like? Um, the roaring twenties with cell phones. <laughs> but just just but try Natasha, to make that happen. But Natasha, what? we don't want to make any allusions to the roaring twenties in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> because don't you remember what happened after the Roaring Twenties in Germany? It didn't end up well. Uh, but I think you're right. Go out there and get out there. But I but th things that interest you, you know, like things where you would, you have, you know, I don't know what you're into, but like if, if you like certain films or whatever, like go to like the premiere of something or go to an art exhibit that sounds like it's something you would like and bring a girlfriend or if they have like a thing at night that's like a, but sometimes they have like, like, I don't know, um, Art exhibits sometimes have evening things where it's like a little more social and there's people having drinks. And but are know. you are you asking? It sounds to me like you're asking what you don't want to date a German man because you don't want them to scream at you about having celery before you eat your goulash or whatever. <laughs> but 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 you are but you're or schnitzel, I guess, is, is more accurate. But you are. <laughs> But see, that's a good what, what, example. That's not that's not a non like you can't absolutely not date a German guy. Like it'd be nice if he wasn't German, but she'd be okay. <laughs> but what I was asking was, are you asking us about the the awkwardness of being in an international city where you're not necessarily going after the German men and you're not necessarily looking for American men? You're finding men that are from some third place, and both of you are defaulting to this like linguistic kind of lingua franca of either your english or broken german and how do you flirt yeah. with international people that no one speaks each other's native language very well yeah exactly and also that but we're coming from different contexts so like when i whenever i speak with americans it's usually very easy because there's like unwritten things you both know right I'd like doggy style you know, they don't have that in europe right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. right. <laughs> uh, but then when you're speaking with other people, you do the whole like get to know things like, oh, you're from Croatia. And then you figure out, OK, what's normal in Croatia? And, you know, and then that's kind of like, what next? Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like it'd be ideal for you to meet somebody who's in your situation, like an American <laughs> uh, or an English speaker. Yeah, but like a, a plant, you know, someone who's there, too. And you know, uh, is is it that international there that it's hard to meet other Americans? I I don't know. So like, I mean, I work in English, so there are a lot of people who are also like expats, but usually people are here like partnered up, right? So like they've moved with a partner or they moved and got married here. And so I'm nearly 30. And so I'm in this awkward phase where it's like, oh, you don't have contextual relationships anymore, like studying or like at university. Then like, you know how you have people sure, around you sure. who are all in the same life phase? Yeah. But I'm asking, I'm, I'm curious what you're at. I'm not exactly, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what you're asking. It's, is it how, to, how do I meet someone? Or is it once I meet someone in this international context, how do I get past the awkwardness of the fact that we're so different? Yeah, the latter. Okay, so this is my feeling about flirting in general. When people ask, this is my, my, ready for a hot take, Tosh? 
when people <laughs> ask about flirting, I generally think that that's I, I any strategy. I think strategy when it comes to relationships is so dumb. Like strategy is for people that are like paralyzed, and you're obviously not. You're obviously very charismatic and intelligent and well spoken. Strategy before you arrive to the flirtation situation is for people that are so paralyzed by social awkwardness that they just are like clam up. So they have to read a book that says like, tell a girl she looks dumb and then she'll come to you or whatever, you know, <laughs> like there is no strategy to flirtation. Flirtation is something that happens when you meet somebody with whom you have fun energy and whether they're Croatian or not seems sort of immaterial. I, mean, I get that there are linguistic barriers. I mean, I could give you specific strategies, which is that you could start telling these Croatian men, let's speak only in German and see, you, you, you know, see who has the better German. You know, there's these silly games that you could play. But in general, I think game playing is not really the, the strategy. The strategy is being your as generic as this sounds advice was being yourself to the ultimate degree so that they can find out whether or not you guys have actual energy you know sh going back and forth between the two of you and, and what's the undertone and the vibe of the person besides their language or besides their where they're from you know are they a fun person are they a cool person are they someone who doesn't you know who wants to tell you what to do are they controlling you know it's like what is the thing you know, it's not just about where they're from. Yeah, so. I feel like also the pandemic. That's why I think a list of what you want, like the qualities you want in someone would be really good because you're looking for those qualities and then you can overcome. I mean, you're obviously, you've been speaking German for seven years. Like you can overcome any kind of language barrier, I think. Yeah, and in Germany, in Germany, they speak, you know, they also speak the international language. Do you know what that is, the international language? Of love? No, it's scatological <laughs> sex. It's the shit play. Like, <laughs> it, like things like that. Aren't they like, really kinky in Berlin more than other places? You tell me. Are they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, what are, what are some like it's, what are some common kinks that you've seen come up? I bet every single of... guy wants a finger in his butt. <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of like BDSM uh, here. So like a lot, like it's very, very common. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. That yeah. sounds exhausting. Like it's, you have to dress up and stuff or wear like a ball gag. Yeah. And like horse hooves. Ugh. Horse hooves. <laughs> yeah. You got to clop around for them and stuff. Yeah. I think it is exhausting. I wrote in a secret for you a while ago because there was an awful like experience, like a bumble experience I had with this guy who was like really into it. And he was like, okay, we can like try it. And it was horrible. Like the next two days later, like the experience was like oh, fine. But then two days later, he like bumble messaged me and said, like, oh, like was so nice and like you're so sweet. And I would really love to take this further, but my partner is pregnant. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what partner? <laughs> So he had found out within the two days, I guess. That's how um, that's how kinky they are. They 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 lie and cheat on their partners. That, that's the kind of kink in Berlin. This is what I think. I think that I think that the pandemic has done a number on all of our uh, confidence in terms of how to interact with people. And I think that like I, I know that's true for me. I feel like oh, I how do I have a conversation? I'm not interested in flirting with people because I found the love of my life. Uh, this woman at a glory hole. Uh, but but <laughs> but it's like I'm I I'm like how do I talk to people? How do I interact on stage? And then I get on stage and I start talking. I'm like oh, I'm just a person. So I think like. To me, that's my advice is, is just forget about how do I flirt with people and get out there and meet people and see if you like them. That's what I think. Be and you yourself. have a great laugh and a great smile. Yeah. And it is your <laughs> asset when you're meeting men. Yeah. And you, you're. Are you flirting with me? Is yeah. this how it works? <laughs> yeah. She's American. It doesn't work. She doesn't, she doesn't flirt with German women. Um, <laughs> um, but good luck. Yeah, good. And, you know, I, I think you're going to be fine. And thank you. What did you say? I'm pushing 30. Oh yeah, right. You have a, you have almost a year left until it's too late. I have a month. I have a month oh, left. Oh, you have a month left. Get out there. See what there is to offer. Just don't eat before. Just do not eat before you eat. That is my final bit of advice. Ugh. That just there is that is just outrageous. All these men trying to change me. I can't. Um. Okay. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Okay. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Danke. Bye. Okay, danke. Good luck. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Well, she was sweet.
She was very cute. I feel like she'd have no problem meeting men. I know. I felt like she was flirting with both of us. No, she's just a sweet girl. I mean, she, it, it kind of sounds like the last guy kind of fucked her up a little bit. Right. Got Cause like her confidence. no one wants to be in a controlling relationship. If, I mean, you sometimes tell me shit, but I married you at least. Like if some guy I didn't even marry starts telling me shit, I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh. It's also funny for that guy to be like, this. The thing is, it's not that I am a controlling asshole. This is what we are like in German culture. This is German, and it's he's. Meanwhile, he's just like a typical like controlling dick. Why do you care, Moshe, if someone like me or your brother wants to eat something before they eat? It's not rational. If they're going to... What do you care? It has absolutely nothing to do with you. I'm hearing you say that, and I know that you're right. But I, I it, I, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. What can I do? All right. Natasha. Yes. You know what doesn't drive me crazy? What? Our, well, actually, you know what really doesn't drive me crazy? What? Is our secrets. I love them. And if you want to leave one, call us. 213-222-8608. Or send us an email at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram. Also, <laughs> also, you can find our podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment. People love comments. And of course, apple.co forward slash endless honeymoon our producer who is a millennial and is actually kind of obnoxious about it said that i didn't need to say forward slash anymore like that i was like showing my age and you know what i thought about it and i tried to get it out of my vocabulary and i was like you know what i don't give a shit you know what i'm a i'm a i'm a gap year um gen x millennial whatever that is. you're gen y gen y Mm -hmm. whatever i am we say forward slash so fucking eat it (laughs) all right wait you're just supposed to not, you're just supposed to omit forwards. See, you're supposed to just say slash. I I'm guess, Gen X her. and I don't even really understand. You guys say leaning tower. <laughs> Apple.co, leaning tower, endless honeymoon. <laughs> All right. Wait, you're supposed to say slash? I guess that's what this young whippersnapper was telling me. I think she meant you should say nothing. No, how would, if you say nothing, the URL will be wrong. So you say slash? Yeah, slash. Okay. Apple.co slash endless honeymoon. Like that. But I say forward slash. And you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to be ashamed of myself anymore. I hear you, honey. I, I, I grew up during NWA, during Nirva- Nirvana. You know, that's... You'd be yourself. Yeah, forward slash. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... I don't know who Lil Nas X is, okay? I don't know who um, who who NBA Young Boy is, okay? I know Beyonce, not Solange, okay? I know it's Solange. I know, uh, I know what I know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cower anymore. I am what I am. I am Gen Y. <laughs> is that right? Gen Y. Yeah, it's That's, like a slightly younger than Gen X. I thought, that, okay, I'm Gen Y. Yeah, but I, Gen Y is not exactly recognized. It's kind of like Gen. It's like the people who are li- like in between millennials and Gen X kind of made that up, I think, so they didn't feel old. Oh, that's interesting. But it's only like three years, right? Exactly. It's like seventy nine, eighty, and eighty one, and then everybody else is, becomes a millennial. I guess it's like seventy nine forward slash eighty <laughs> forward slash eighty one. At any rate, uh, hit us up, five star, subscribe, all that stuff. We love you, and most of all, I. Lo- love you i lo- uh, love you too goodbye natasha Bye. i'll see you next week in seven days i won't see you between <laughs>